Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 21 to 24 of the Algebra 1 Common Core New York Regents exam for August 2016. All right, let's take a look at our problem 21. It says the function f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 11 can be written in vertex form as, so we have f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 11. Now we're going to be completing the square here, okay? So we have f of x. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the square doesn't have any coefficients. So the first two terms, we're going to group them together, and then we are going to factor out 3 so that x squared does not have a coefficient, okay? So we have 3x squared. Now, when you factor out 3 from 3x squared and 12x, it is as though you were dividing by 3, okay? So when you factor out 3 from 12x, you're left with positive 4x, and then plus 11. Okay, so now let's direct our attention to the quantity in the parentheses. What we have is an incomplete square, okay? So 3 times. Our goal is to complete this square, so we have the... Um, square component plus 4x, the bx component. Now, what we need is the c that makes this a perfect square trinomial, okay? So that c will be added on there, plus 11. Now, we are adding a number to the right side of this equation, okay? In order to preserve equality, what we're going to do is we have to subtract that number we added from the same side of the equation. But there is a twist here. We have a 3 in front of the parentheses. So whatever we add in the parentheses, we have to subtract 3 times that value, whatever it is. All right, so that's a little trick you want to keep in mind. Now, what term makes this a perfect square trinomial? To complete the square, you need to simply add b over 2 square. Okay, that's how you complete the square. In this scenario here, b is equal to 4. Okay, so b is 4, the coefficient of x. So what you're going to do is divide that by 2. b over 2 is 4 over 2, which is 2. And then you square it. All right, b over 2 squared is 2 squared, which is 4. So that's what you add to create a perfect square trinomial. So you add 4 here. And then you add 3, you subtract 3 times 4 because of this 3 on the outside. So what have we accomplished thus far, we have created a perfect square trinomial. Now, to factor this perfect square trinomial, we can use a shortcut, just read the first and the last terms, and bring down the middle sign, okay? So that yields x plus square root of 4 is 2, quantity square. That's the factored form of this perfect square trinomial, plus 11 minus 3 times 4, which is 12. Okay, so the final simplified form of this uh, quadratic function in vertex form is 3 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 1. Correct answer for number 21 is option number 3. Okay, number 22. So the system of equations is given below. So we have the system right here. Let's call this one 1 and call this one 2. All right, question, which system of equation does not have the same solution? So if you have um, any of these equations multiplied by the, um, combined with the integer multiple of another equation, of the other equation, any of those equations that is equal to that system will have exactly the same solution, okay? So what we're looking for is any of these equations with an integer multiple of the other equation in the same system, that would have the same solution. But if you have a situation where we don't have that happening, then um, that would not have the same solution as this, okay? So first of all, let's take a look at equation one. Equation one is x plus 2y equals 5. So any system of equations with this equation or an integer multiple of this equation combined with this second equation will have the same solution as this system. So what do we do? We look for any equations that is equal to, uh, that has the first one as x plus 2i. Okay, so option 3 is good. 
Uh, option four is good. Okay, so now we're done with that. Now we notice that in one and two, uh, we have integer multiples of the first equation. For equation one, the first equation looks like it was tripled, and in equation two, it looks like it was quadrupled. So let's see what happens. If we triple equation one, three times x plus two y equals five, do we get the first equation in option one? Let's see. So distribute three to everything. You have three x plus six y equals 15. So this is perfect. Of equation two, uh, one, we have a match. Now equation two, you have a four there. So let's multiply equation one by four to see if we get exactly this equation right here. So two x plus two y equals five. If you multiply by four, you have four x plus eight y equals 20. So that's a match, that's a multiple, okay? So it looks like all four options passed the test for equation one. So the determining factor will be equation two, okay? So let's take a look at equation number two. The second equation is 2x plus y equals 4. Now let's see the option that has this as an alternative, okay, as the second equation. 2x plus y, oh, we have a perfect match here. Bam, so this has the same solution as this system. We look at option 2, this one also. Now it's either option 3 or option 4 that does not. So let's take a look at option 3. You notice that um, there is a coefficient of 6 here. So we're going to multiply equation 2 by 3 so that the coefficient of x will be 6x. And then we'll see if we get this exact equation. Okay, so if we distribute, we have 6x plus 3y equals 12. Now, does this match the second equation in option 3? The answer is absolutely. So we can automatically conclude that option four should be the answer, all right? Well, let's verify, okay? We can just assume, let me show you that it, it in fact is. You have a four here in front of the x, so we're going to be multiplying the second equation by two, so we have a four x as a coefficient of x, and then let's see what that, what impact that alteration has on the remainder of the um, equation, okay? So let's do that. <clears throat> So equation one, again, we have two times two x plus y equals four. So when we distribute, we get four x plus two y equals eight. Four x plus two y equals 12. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a problem. If this were eight, then we'll have the same solution as this, but it's not. So the only system that does not have the same solution as this is option four because the second equation is not an integer multiple of the second equation in the system of equations. All right, let's take a look at question 23. It says, based on the graph below, which expression is a possible factorization of P of X? So what does this graph show us? It shows us the zeros, right? So what are the zeros? This is one, two, negative three. And then we have two, and then we have uh, four, all right? So the zeros are x equals negative three, x equals two, and x equals four, okay? So in order to get them um, into the factored state, we're going to set each factor equal to zero and then use the reversal of the zero product property to generate our factored form for a possible polynomial with this um, graph, okay? So let's set each one equal to zero. To accomplish that, you add three to both sides on the first one, subtract two from both sides on the second, subtract four from both sides on the third. What's the result? X plus three equals zero. And then uh, x minus 2 equals 0 is the next factor. And then x minus 4 equals 0 is the third factor, OK? So now using the zero product property, we have x plus 3 times x minus 2 
times x minus 4 equals 0. So the possible polynomial that has these roots is x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. And as you can clearly see, our answer is option number 1. Okay, let's take a look at number 24. It says, Milton has his money invested in a stock portfolio. The value v of x of, the, of his portfolio can be modeled for the function v of x equals 30,000 times 0.7 a to the x, where x is the number of years since he has made his investment. Which statement describes the rate of the value of his portfolio? Okay, so we have, um, if you have the equation, let's go over the formulas real quick. So let's see, growth and depreciation or decay. So here goes your formula. So if you have um, y equals a times 1 plus r to the x, because of this plus right here, this is going to be uh, growth by r percent. So growth by r percent. All right. Um, how about a scenario where you have y equals a times 1 minus r to the x? Well, let me make a real quick change here. So we have 1 minus r to the x. We're looking at exponential functions here, okay? That's how you model investment growth. Uh, so in this case, you have what? What do you have? You have, de you have decay for a it, it decreases, so it decreases by, by R percent because of this minus right here, all right? And then with this plus thing, we'll have a growth. So let's take a look at the function that we have on the consideration V of X equals 30,000 times 0 0.78 raised to the X power. All right, now the formula is y equals, let me use a different color here, y equals a times 1 minus r to the x. So we can clearly see that 0 0.78 matches up with our 1 minus r, okay? So you might wonder, wait a minute, there are two options here. We have 1 plus r, the first one, and we have 1 minus r. Why did we pick 1 minus r as the correct formula? Well, if you take a look at 0 0.78, is it bigger or less than 1? 0 0.78 is less than 1, which means that, by the word less, you're subtracting the percentage from 1 in order to accomplish this rate. This uh, base, sorry. So had it been this number, this base was bigger than one, then we'll use the first one, okay? Since it's less than one, that's why we use the minus um, option. Okay, so we want to find out what the rate it decreases by is. So we're going to set these two equal to each other. 0 0.78 is equal to one minus R. You can guess what it is. What do you subtract from one to get 0 0.78? It's 0 0.22, right? But let me just work it out for you. So um, subtract one from both sides. And then you're going to have negative R equals negative 0 0.22. And they divide by negative one. And that gives you your rate. Okay. The R is 0 0.22 in decimal form, which is 22%. Okay, so is this a 22% increase or a 22% decrease? Well, the sign tells us the answer. In this case, it was a 1 minus r scenario, so it's a 22% decrease. Okay, so his, percent, um, his portfolio decreases by 22% per year, which is really sad, but yeah, it's losing a lot of money. Okay, so our answer for number 24 is option number two. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the 
Uh, Regents exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. Questions and comments should be placed in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that we can uh, give you updates to the remainder of this review series. More clips can be found on markgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.